So hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to use track points in Twixter for Premiere Pro. Track points can be used to reduce warp or even completely get rid of them, making your clips look smoother than before. So yeah, let's get started. So first things first, you want to have a Twixted clip and I've already made a tutorial on how to Twixter. And as you can see, I have my clip right over here. So 100 at the beginning, in the center it's around 8. Then it goes back up all the way to 100 and of course it's been graphed as well but this is how it looks like as you can see. The first thing we are going to do is identify the warps. So I'm just going to head forward a little bit and already you can notice that there's a lot of warp around the hand. If I just zoom in you can see that there is a lot of warp around the fingers and also around the hair. And if I keep going forward you can see that there's even more warp. This twixter is extremely warpy and it looks like the finger kind of dissolves away rather than blend in. And so we are going to clear this up. So the first thing you want to do is head all the way to the start of your clip. On Twixter you want to head over to display and change this to source. What this is going to do is ignore the Twixter and the keyframes and it's just going to show you the raw clip. You can see that each frame is normal, it's basically what's inside the nested sequence. You want to scroll all the way down until you find this where it says track points, you just want to open it up. Now all of these settings will appear. Do not get confused, it's actually very easy to use. The only issue is that it takes a lot of time. So basically these allow you to track a specific pixel throughout the entire clip. I want to clear up all the warp around the hand so I'm going to start off from the top and then make it all the way round to the bottom. So let's begin. So starting with the first point we're going to set this to main BG layer. Don't use basically means it's not going to use the point and main BG layer means that it's actually using it. I'll go into more detail later but for now all we need to do is just set this stopwatch for these keyframes over here so I'm just going to click it. You're not going to see the point immediately. What you need to do is just drag it to the right and then move it down. So pulling this right will make it higher and what it's basically doing is moving the track point to the right. You can't see it right now because it's very high up so we're going to move it down as well by using this second option. Pulling this to the right will bring it down and you can see that it's right over there it's a tiny dot. I'm just going to place it somewhere around there as you can see. You want to click away on something random so I'm just going to click on color it doesn't matter because once you go back onto it it's going to appear. The actual point which you can use to control will be visible and you can move this around. It is quite difficult to see so what I'm going to do first of all is zoom in by 150 and if I just go to the left I can see that it's right over there. The first thing I want to track is the top of the hand so I'm just going to drag this all the way to the top and I'm going to place it over here on the line not over there because that's going to track the hair instead. Just going to adjust this a little so it's easier to see. Now once I move one keyframe forward you can see that it's moved so we need to move this point as well making sure that it's following the top of the hand right over there. One keyframe ahead again just going to move this as well and move it again. You basically just want to repeat this continuously for each keyframe until you reach the end. So I'm done with the first one as you can see it just goes completely black because that's the end but you can see that for each frame I've tracked this part of the hand and now if we head back to the start we're going to create a second point. If you've forgotten where the warp was around you can always go back and change it to the twixted output. I'm just going to zoom out again and what I can do is just see where it was warping around so it appears to be around the fingers a lot so that was quite unnecessary but I did that just to help you understand how it works. Now it's time to actually fix up the fingers. So what I'm going to do is change the display back to source. Scroll all the way down and you want to change the point 2 to main BG layer. Keyframe it as well for the position. Now once again I'm just going to pull it to the right and it's probably going to be visible around 500. If you're using a square sequence it may look different. You might have to pull it to the right a little bit more and then pull it down. You can see that mine has appeared right over there. I can't move it by clicking and dragging. I have to use these values over here but I can fix that easily by just clicking on color and then clicking back. I'm going to zoom in again but this time 100. If I remember correctly there was a lot of warp around the small finger so I'm just going to place a track point right around there. It's between the ring finger and the small finger so just about there. So if I just get rid of it you can see the gap is right over there so if I place it it's over there. Move one keyframe forward and just move it again in between the two fingers right over there. Repeat this process for each frame and that's it. You can see that it follows the gap in between the two fingers. Third point we're going to set this to main BG layer, keyframe this and just set it to 500 or something higher. I'm going to do 800 and for let's say 50 because that's going to be below the second one so you can see that it's right there. Click away, click back. I think I'm going to have this one in between the middle finger and the ring finger. It really does depend as long as they don't change if that makes sense. So if a gap formed between the two fingers later on then that could make it warp even more but I believe that there is no gap. So yeah you can see that there is a little bit of a gap but it's fine as long as I follow the edge of the fingers. So I'm just going to repeat this again 
just keep moving it forward making sure it's perfectly on point and i'm done now i do want to see how it looks like so far so i'm just going to scroll up and change it back to twixted output set the frame back to fit and so far it's a little bit difficult to tell because i've set the playback to one quarter but if we do take a look you can see that there's still a lot of warp the fingers at the top are fine this is what needs work though so again let's change it back to source and do some more work zoom in to 100 and set this to main bg layer keyframe and locate the point I'm just going to try and find it. It's appeared right there. If I remember correctly, it was around the thumb. So I'm going to place it right around here. And I'm just going to track this as well. And that's done. So again, I'm going to look for where the warps were. I think there was a lot of warping around the tip of the thumb and also the knuckle. So I'm going to do the knuckle first. Place it right next to the knuckle over there. One keyframe ahead find it once again and also i do want to say really quickly don't rush this process it does take a while especially if you want twixter that looks really good so it seems like we're already halfway on using the points we do have at six more left do be careful on how many you use because there are only 12 in total anyways back to what i was doing i'm going to do the tip of the thumb now so i'm gonna place it i don't actually know where to place it i don't know if i should place it on the nail itself or the tip of the thumb if i placed it on the tip of the thumb this might walk let's have a look at how the clip looks so we can see that his nail is visible over there and as we go by it's still slightly visible i think i'm gonna place it right at the edge of his nail so like right around there you see where it kind of like cuts off like right there i think that should work hopefully it does not warp even more but let's see so i'll be back once i've done this as well actually i am certain that his hair is going to warp look at these two frames so if it would show on this frame his finger is close by next to this piece of hair and then on the next one it completely jumps over there so i'm certain that there's going to be some warp around this piece of hair but hopefully it doesn't so that's been done if i just show you you can see that over here it tracks the edge of the thumb i think this will cause a lot of warp i'm not entirely sure hopefully it's not going to warp even more but anyways we're going to move on to the next one as i said i'm going to do the bottom of the hand now so i think i'm going to place it around here i want it to track this bit this bump over here and also the end bit over here Right, okay, so I think that is done. I was going to add one more, but I thought, never mind. I've tracked part of the bottom bit of the hand, but if it does warp around here, I can do that as well. Let's take a look at how this looks so far. So we're going to change it back to Twixted Output, and I'm going to render this, so I'm just going to hit Enter on my keyboard. So let's see how it looks full screen. It looks okay. I mean, there is still a lot of warp, you can clearly see. The first thing I noticed was the hair. It seems to kind of like flicker for some reason. Since we've tracked the hand, it's kind of distorted whatever's around it. What we're going to do next is track the hair to reduce all of this warp the hand is pretty much fine now it looks okay it's just the hair that kind of affects it so head back into the settings source again we've only got four more points to use so we need to be very careful we can't really track the hair at the beginning you can see that it appears later on so what we're going to do is have to keyframe the use so instead of main bg layer it's going to be don't use until we see the parts that we want to track so i'm just going to set it to don't use at the beginning and then find the part where i want it to begin so i want to track this piece of hair over here each frame it moves so next frame is over there next frame is over there next frame is over there however there are some frames that we don't need to track because there's no point there is not going to be any warp since all of these frames are very similar to each other so first of all you want to set the keyframe to don't use at the beginning then set it to main pg layer to where you want it to begin so this is where the hair strand is visible i'm just going to move this keyframe ahead keyframe the position i'm just going to place it around here perhaps i'm not entirely sure in fact you know what i'm going to do i'm going to go one more keyframe ahead and then just move these to the right i'm going to place it in between these two hair strands so right over here and then just move it from there on so next frame move it down right over there next frame again move it to the left now there's no point doing the rest because these frames are very similar so i'm just going to head one frame ahead and then set the main bg layer to don't use it's not going to track it anymore from this point on again i'm going to track another piece of hair so keyframe that to don't use find the point i want it to begin so i think i want to track this one over here and so i'm going to set it to main bg layer keyframe this find the spot i'm going to do the edge of the hair next frame move it to the left and i've done that as well so you can see that this one tracks this piece of hair this process is very long it takes quite a lot of time i mean i've been recording this for about 60 minutes it's not easy it's not perfect 
perfect and it does take a lot of time and patience but let's see how this turns out so i'm going to change it back to twixted output and render this and so this is the result of course it's still very warpy but the hand looks so much better than before before it looked like this which was very noticeable now it looks so much better of course there are still warps and that's because of the clip itself and also how you graph your speed or time remap that can make a big difference also i've just added rsmb onto my clip and you can see that it looks much smoother than before this doesn't reduce warps but it gives the illusion that they're hidden or at least part of the motion blur because the way it blends in but anyways that is how you use track points so thank you for watching and i'll see you next time so yeah peace